Hello, and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today, we are so excited to be introducing our set, How You Bean Strawberries Add-On and its coordinating dies. So let's go ahead and check it out. This set has a big pile of strawberries and also an individual strawberry. And I'm gonna stamp out that strawberry a bunch of times so that I can show you all the little extra things you can add. So here are a bunch of seeds which you can add into the strawberry to fill it full of seeds. And there are also other awesome options too. And that are some different styles of smiley face. So you see there's the opening in the strawberry right there so that you can perfectly fit that smiley face in. And then there's also a pile of little smaller seeds. So you could fill in just the bottom with seeds and then stamp one of the faces in in both ways looks super super cute and then my favorite little face is this one with the tongue sticking out so you can add that right there into the strawberry this set was designed to work with our original How You Bean stamp set. And this stamp set is so cute. It has this adorable little jar and lid. And it originally came with jelly beans, but we have all these different add-ons that you can add into the jar. And now we have these super cute strawberries. So here is that How You Bean jar. And then here is how those strawberries fit perfectly inside the jar. And you can use the jar on its own or as a shaker. And we're gonna be showing you both ways in the video today. And how cute is that jar just filled with strawberries? Now remember all those extra strawberry elements? Well, you can use those on the pile of strawberries as well. So we're gonna do a bunch of them here, either stamping in all of the seeds or the small amount of seeds or the other little tiny smiley faces. And I really love stamping the smiley faces on the strawberries in the jar because there's some strawberries that are upside down and it's really fun to stamp the smiley face upside down. I don't know why it always just cracks me up. So here you can see how you can fill in those strawberries. And of course you could leave the strawberry pile plain or you could add in all of these fun little extra elements. There's some great sentiments in this set too. We have you are so berry awesome and then we have have a berry happy birthday Have you are such a sweet friend and then we also have two phrases that are a perfect match for the label in the original How you bean jar so you can use those phrases on their own or you can stamp out that cute little label for the jar So we're gonna do that here We're gonna stamp out that label twice and then we can fill in those two little extra sentiments And then we have one that says berries and then one that says berry sweet uh, So they're both just adorable and really fun for adding a label onto the jar we're going to use our Copic markers to add some color to these strawberries and this color combo here is Jen Shirkus's favorite strawberry combo and I am in love with it. It's R29 and R35 and you really only need two markers and you get such a beautiful dynamic look. So here you can see that I'm adding my dark marker first and then just blending it in with the light and to decide what part is the dark or the light I'm looking at the areas where the strawberries overlap. So for example when the strawberry leaf from the other one overlaps it I add a little bit of the dark marker there and then blend it out with the light. For the little strawberries on the side, I'm just kind of playing around with different areas there, adding some dark and then adding some light. So dark under the leaves and then light on down and look how cute that looks. And then I'm gonna repeat this same thing for the rest of the individual strawberries too. And I'm gonna add my shadow underneath those little leaves at the top and then blend it down. You can see just how cute and sweet this looks. Uh, I just love it. It's so super quick and easy and I hope you love this color combo too. With the dark red strawberries, I really love to have a bright, almost like neony green. So we're going to use YG07, YG03, and YG01. And that YG01 is what makes the leaves look so cool. So you'll see I do the dark and then the medium. I leave only a little bit at the end where I do that really, really light green. And for some reason, that's what gives it that awesome pop. So just a little tiny bit of that very, very light yellow green at the very bottom of the leaves. So I'm going to add my dark, my medium and then that light neon green right at the bottom. Now these are the coordinating dies for the set, which you can bend apart at the tabs or use your wire snips to separate. We're gonna take those dies and line them up with the image in the set, hold them in place with some low tack tape, run it through the die cut machine, and you'll have perfectly cut out strawberries every time. And then here I wanted to show you the set that this is related to. So this is that How You Bean stamp set that we talked about earlier. And then we have the How You Bean coordinating die and the How You Bean shaker add-on. So you can either just use the coordinating die or you can use the shaker add-on with this How You Bean. And then you can go ahead and use all the different add-ons. So this is strawberries, but we have stars and peppermints and all sorts of adorable add-ons for this jar. So I just love this so much. 
So first up, we're gonna be using just the plain jar and we're gonna do the shaker second. And here you can see that we have our scalloped slimline rectangle die and we're gonna run that through the die cut machine with some white cardstock. And then we're gonna do some ink blending on this. So we're gonna be using some tumbled glass distress oxide inks to create a really beautiful blue sky. And today we are recreating a card by Tammy. So thank you so much for this gorgeous card, Tammy. So we're gonna be starting towards the top of our sky and then working on down to the bottom so that it almost goes and fades out into nothing. So we'll have darker blue up towards the top and then almost nothing fading out into the white towards the bottom. Then we're gonna bring in Broken China just for a little bit of a darker blue ink to add a little bit more of the darkness at the top and then blend it back out with that lighter blue ink towards the bottom. Now we're gonna add some splatters. So we're gonna smear some ink right onto the block. And then this is Rebecca doing this ink blending here. And she has this really fun technique where she sprays water onto the ink that's on the block. She picks it up with the paintbrush and then she taps the paintbrush against the block to create her splatters. And she feels like this gives her more control. And I really like this way too. And it kind of almost gives you tinier splatters. So if you've never tried this way, it's a really, really fun way to create splatters with this. So we added a little bit more water to the block and then we're gonna pick up that ink, tap the side of the block and just add more and more splatters all of the way around. This was such a cool idea of Tammy's and this is how she got a really cool white border for this. So we're gonna take this scallop slimline piece here and we're going to trim off the scallops here. So we're gonna trim off the scallops right up at the top and then we're gonna flip it over and trim off the scallops at the bottom. Then what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking just a plain white scallop slimline and then layering that underneath and that's gonna give this really cool border. Doesn't that look so awesome? It almost looks like you've masked off the edges, but you actually haven't because of how the way the scallops line up. And I always used to think that Tammy masks off the edge, but what she does is she trims the top and bottom and it's really such a cool look. I love it. So now you can see we have the bright white scallop at the top of the bottom, but on the sides we have the ink blending and it's such a cool look. Here we're going to die cut some flower market paper with a stitched rectangle and we're going to use that slimline piece in a little bit of a different way. We're actually going to be using it on an A2 size card as a decorative edge. So this is a really fun way to use your slimline dies for not a slimline card. So I always love finding other ways to use my dies and this gives such a nice border. So we're going to just adhere that down onto our beautiful pink stripe here and then we can just trim off the edges in a paper trimmer and you'll see that we're going to have this perfect perfect look on the card with scallops up at the top and the bottom. Next we're going to take out the How You Bean Strawberries add-on, the How You Bean stamp set, all the clouds, and the berry special mice. And of course the berry special mice are the perfect addition to the How You Bean Strawberries. And there we've got the awesome How You Bean stamp set. So we're going to go ahead and take some images that we've stamped, colored, and die cut and start creating a super cute scene with all of these stamp sets together. So this is our really cute jar and of course we're going to fill it with our strawberries. Next, we can add the lid to the jar to give it a nice finished look. And then we're gonna take the individual strawberries from the How You Bean Strawberries add-on, and we're gonna layer those onto the card. So we're gonna take one with just flat adhesive and tuck it behind the jar, and then one with a little foam square in front. And that's gonna give some really awesome dimension. Then we're gonna take some adorable mice from the Berry Special stamp set and start layering them into the scene. And this scene is just so cute. And there's just something so adorable about the mice with all of the strawberries in the jar. Like they've been working hard on making some strawberry jam. So we're laying a bunch of images from that set, some tinier strawberries, of course the adorable mice, our little berry patch sign, and then this little guy eating the strawberry at the top is what makes the whole card, it's so cute. Now the All the Clouds stamp set is the best because it has all the clouds. Every time I need clouds for a set, I go to this one because it has clouds in a bunch of different sizes and I can always find the perfect thing for my scene. So we found some clouds in some different sizes, attached them into the scene. And then before we finish the rest of the scene, we're gonna do some stamping for our sentiment. So here we have some guava cardstock and one of the sentiments from the How You Bean Strawberries add-on. We're gonna ink it up with some clear embossing ink, which is a nice sticky ink. Then we can go ahead and add some white heat embossing powder to this and then we can heat it up up with our heat tool and get a really nice bright white shiny sentiment on some of this guava cardstock. And this bright pink is gonna look so pretty with the subtle pink stripes in the background and then those awesome red strawberries. So here is a sentiment banner die and we're gonna line that up with the edge of the sentiment and then die cut it so that it has a straight edge on one side. 
and then we're going to layer this into the scene. And then you'll see once we layer it into the scene, there was a little bit too much banner there. So we can just easily trim that off with a pair of scissors and then it'll make it the perfect length for the card. Next, we're going to take this whole panel and we're going to put it on a standard size card base, which is five and a half by four and a quarter. Now you may remember we had a couple more images and the left side of the card is looking a little bit blank. So we're going to take one more cloud and another bee that comes from the very special stamp set and we're going to layer that into the scene and it really finishes the whole thing. And this is just so cute. It is absolutely adorable and such a fun card to make. Now next up, Shari is going to show us how to make a shaker with this and it turns out so cute. So take it away, Shari. So to create my card today, I'm using the new How You Bean Strawberries add-on along with the jar from the original How You Bean set. And I'm going to be making a shaker card, so I'm going to be using the shaker add-on die set. I've already colored and cut out my jar, so I have that solid jar with the strawberries. I've used that frame die to cut out the jar that's the frame. And then I've also used that frame die to cut out about eight pieces of white cardstock to stack up to make the kind of walls around my shaker card. I'm also using that solid jar die to cut a piece of acetate that will go on top and hold all my shaker pieces inside. So you can see how these are gonna stack up. You could also use craft foam, but I just find that I get a much cleaner look personally by stacking up some cardstock. So I'm just using my white cardstock and then you'll get this white edge around it. And I'll just use my liquid glue to hold all these together. They stack together nicely since they're die cut. And like I said, I have about eight of these and these will create the walls to hold in all my shaker pieces inside of the jar. So now that all those are put together, I'm going to work on the front. So this is that frame that is a die cut from the stamp jar. And I'm just adding some thin dry adhesive runner around the back of it. And this is going to hold my acetate. So I'm just putting the acetate on the back. I will go ahead and add that jar lid that I colored and die cut out to make my jar finished and closed up on the front of the card. And then I can also take all those stacked pieces and add those to the jar with the strawberries. So this is going to give me the walls of my compartment for all my shaker things to go in. Now I usually do run an anti-static tool around there to get rid of any stickiness that might be left from some glue that might have seeped out. And then for my shaker pieces, I'm just putting in some clear iridescent seed beads. Also these little heart shaker pieces. I'm only using the white and the pink though. I felt like the red ones kind of disappeared on top of my red strawberries. So I'm just dropping those red ones back in and just using the pink and the white ones. And then I'm using that same thin adhesive runner to put some adhesive around that frame on the back of the acetate. And then I can just enclose my jar and trap all those shaker pieces inside. So now I have my little shaker jar and I wanted to embellish it a little bit, tie a little twine around it, dress it up some. So I'm using this twine that has red and pink and white in it, which goes perfectly with the colors in my strawberries and my shaker pieces. And I just wrapped it around twice and I'm tying a bow, kind of like when you get those fancy jellies or fruits that have the fabric and the ribbon around the top. That's sort of the idea I was going for. And then I'm just putting a little glue dot behind the knot of the bow to hold it in place. Now for the sentiment, I'm going to be using Henry's ABCs for the large part of the sentiment, and then I'll have a bit at the top and the bottom, and I'm stamping those onto some banners cut from some ballet slipper cardstock. So you can see I stamped that happy birthday to the far left of a banner that's gonna go below the big die cut words. And then the have a I've stamped to the right. So you're gonna see how this is going to come together. Now I've die cut the word berry, so my sentiment can say have a berry happy birthday. And I've die cut these out of some guava cardstock, but I wanted to ink them up, give them a little two-tone ombre look. So I'm using abandoned coral, and I'm just adding a bit of ink to the bottom of each letter. I felt like this made them match my strawberries just a little bit better. 
And also in the idea of making them match my strawberries a little bit better, I thought it would be fun to add some black watercolor speckles, almost like the seeds in a strawberry. So I'm just getting a little bit of black watercolor and because these are very small, I am going to use the method of flicking the paint off the side of a block so you get the really tiny splatters versus the larger dots that you get when you just tap the paintbrush. So I've worked on the images for my card as well as the sentiment and now I'm going to work on the background pieces. So I'm using the Gotta Have Gingham rainbow paper. I've pulled out the blue with the orthogonal grid and I'm just cutting that down so I can make a strip down the center of my card. But I don't want it to be plain on each side so I'm also cutting the quilted backdrop from some white and then I'll just glue that onto a white note card. So you're going to have that quilted detail that's white on white and it's going to peek out on both sides of this gingham paper. So that's a really fun white on white texture and then for the gingham paper I'm just going to put it right down the center and then I'll trim off the excess that's along the bottom. So I'm using my grid mat as well as the pattern of that die cut background piece to help line it up nice and straight, make sure it's even and centered. And then I'll just trim off that excess with my scissors. And you have this really nice gingham strip down the center. Now the other nice thing about this gingham, since it's on the 90 degree angle, is it's a really great tool to help line up your letters and your sentiment. So I always like to start with the center letter and that way I can work my way out and make sure that my word is nice and even and centered on my card. So I started with the R and then I'm working my way to the left with the other R and the Y. And I like that it hangs off of that gingham just a little bit. And then I'll work my way towards the other side. And you can see how it's nice and even. Once I get that B on there, it's going to hang off the other side of the gingham a little bit and match the Y on the other side. So the have A is going to go above it and happy birthday is going to go below it. So you can see now when you see the layout Y, I stamped one to the far right of a banner and one to the far left. And this gingham is also going to help me line these up nice and straight as well. So I'll just line this one up above and then I have that one below and I'll trim off the excess of each of these as well. So I like that look of them coming in from each side of the card. Now to add my jar. So since I tied that twine around, it kind of has some height to it in the back. And you can put foam back here, but I have these extra pieces left over from where I cut out all those pieces of cardstock for the frame. So I just stacked up about four of those so I get it the thickness of the twine. And I'm basically using this as if it was foam and popping that onto my card base. And that way that string doesn't make the top of it pop up where the bottom of it is flush with the card. I also have these little individual strawberries and I'm going to add a couple smiley faces to two of them. And to the other ones, I will add the seeds. So there are some stamps in this set where you can add the seeds to the strawberry if you don't want a smiley face, but you still want it to look like it's full of seeds. So that's what I'm going to do on these other three. I'm only going to put a face on two of them. So I'm just going to tuck this one behind my jar. This one I'm going to pop up on a foam square so it's got a little bit of height compared to the one under the jar. And then this one I'm going to glue right to the front of the jar. So you get those nice differences in height by using the foam on some and then just gluing it to the front of the jar for the other ones. So I'll do the same thing on this side. I've added foam to that one and this one I'll put right on the jar. And that way nothing has to hide behind the jar. And then here is that finished card. I really love those bright red strawberries with that blue gingham paired with Henry's ABCs. I think it looks perfect for spring.
This card is so cute, Shari. I absolutely love how you use the Henry's ABCs for the sentiment. And then the awesome shaker is just so adorable and cute. And next up, we have some incredible cards by the design team. And first up, we have a card by Callie that is so super cute. And I love that it looks like the mice are working hard on canning their strawberries. They even have a label and a jar lid ready. <laughs> Here is an adorable card by Tammy. And what I love about this card is that she used the pile of strawberries on its own without the jar. So this pile of strawberries is perfect with or without the jar, especially with those very special mice. Grace has some of our favorite mice baking up some strawberry cupcakes on this card. It is so cute and I love this look on a slimline card. Here this card by Megan is absolutely adorable and I love the you're totally my jam sentiment. It just makes me smile. And this is the card by Tammy that inspired us to make ours today. It's so super cute and I love the softer look that she used on her strawberries. This card by Anea is incredible. I love her layers of pink and green. It looks perfect with her colored in strawberries. And then this jar is a perfect match for the Reveal Wheel strawberry add-on too. And this card is so cute by Rebecca. So we cannot wait to see what you guys create with How You Bean Strawberries add-on. So make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today. And I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.